Of course, Lichtenauer wasn't the only fencing master whose techniques were passed down through manuals. We're going to demonstrate several examples of techniques from other traditions that can be useful during the course of a fight. The technique called Wechselhau can be translated as changing strike. Its description differs from manual to manual. Here we use an interpretation of a version described in the fencing manual of Sigmund Ringeck. This form of defense is also found in many Italian fencing manuals from the Renaissance. Here, Alex assumes a low guard, for instance, left alba or vexel. In this way, he exposes his head. Hans accepts this invitation and attacks with a right Oberhau. Alex now uses his short edge to strike the attack aside from below. He immediately counters with an Oberhau that follows the trajectory of Hans's sword. The same movement in front view. You can clearly see the strong hip twist in the beginning phase and the position of the sword at the moment of sword contact. The same technique from the other side. The attack is again displaced with the short edge from below. The riposte is once again executed with an overhaul. To our knowledge, Verhängen, or hanging, was first mentioned in the fencing manual of Joachim Maia. However, the technique itself is the same as one that had already been described nearly 100 years earlier by Johannes Lekuschner. It's the Bogen technique, used for fencing with the Messe. We are convinced this technique was also used with the long sword in Lekuschner's time. Alex assumes right alba, while Hans is in vom Tag on the right shoulder. When Hans attacks with a diagonal Oberhau, Alex lifts his hilt using a thumb grip. The point of the sword remains hanging downward. In this way, the opponent's strike meets the flat of the defender's sword. If the attacker's sword glides downwards, the counterattack is a right Oberhau done with a double step. If Hans stays in the bind, Alex pushes the sword away with his crossguard and strikes a right Zwerschau. Here, the same technique executed from the other side. Hans begins in left alba, while Alex is in vom Tag on the left shoulder. Alex now attacks with a left Oberhau, which Hans defends with a hanging to the right. Again, the thumb grip is used. If the opponent's sword slides down the flat of the blade, he follows up with a left Oberhau in combination with a double step. If Alex stays in the bind, 
Hans pushes Alex's sword aside with his cross and strikes around with a Zwerschau. The Sturzhau, or plunging strike, is described differently in the diverse sources. We use this term for the technique that equates to the vinca in Johannes Leküchner's Messer fencing. Alex is testing out Hans's reactions with probing attacks. He notices that Hans only defends towards the sword and neglects to offer a simultaneous threat. Making use of this knowledge, Alex again begins with a diagonal Oberhau. Instead of continuing this motion, he lets the point plunge over by crossing his wrists. This allows him to hit Hans behind his defense. Here you can see this movement from the front. Remember that the angle of attack stays the same during the complete movement. Usually, this technique is used to draw out the opponent's defense to the side in order to make it easier to attack the other side. Alex again attacks with a Sturzhau. He doesn't let the strike connect, but swings through under Hans's defense instead and strikes a Zwerschau or an Unterhau to the other side. Here, Hans strikes a Sturzhau from the left side. The movement is an exact mirror image of the right version. Hans uncrosses his arms in order to hit Alex behind his defense. Here, Hans again uses the left Sturzhau to draw Alex's defense to the side and then attack the other side. He begins with a left diagonal Oberhau and uncrosses his arms during the movement. Then, he moves the point through under Alex's defense in order to finally hit him on the left side of his head with a strike. <laughs> 